Right then, to further move on, we've got two controls now, and they're tied in to the analog inputs. So that's uh, A0 and A1. I don't know if you can see it, but A0 and A1. Okay. So reading A0 and A1, and that provides the control, uh, controller control, as if it were. These are 100k pots because the current is not very much. It's not really CMOS level, so we don't need much. And um, you should be able to hear it. It's actually on, but it's a very, very small mark and a very large space, so it's clicking. And so I can increase the mark. Now I'm going to have to do this and hold this at the same time. So if I now increase the... So we've got a supply of 7.5 volts, full on, into the... Uh, into the uh, motor <coughs> and we're controlling everything now not by the voltage of the power pack but by mark space ratio we have no sensors it's not using sensors this is just stepping but it's just to sort of get the idea so i can increase the mark and you'll see it's obviously moving it and eventually and there we go a bit dodgy and uh, we've got a scope attached so we can see what mark space ratio actually it is We'll see for a moment. It's a bit, bit, still a bit unstable, so we'll just increase the mark a bit more to make it stable. Hmm. It's still a bit unstable, but it's not that bad. Let's see, we, that's actually flashing in sympathy with the uh, <coughs> with the uh, the phasing. Okay, so it's obviously not very much. In fact, I'll increase it further. maximum mark now okay which is not much and the way it's worked out in the software is we've got mark which is just simply read in and that is the mark of the loop so it's actually pretty quick I mean it's probably I don't know I think it's 1024 on the mark and uh, that gives us that so what we can now do is decrease the sp spaces on maximum but with space what we've done is we've times it by six um, is it 16 isn't it Shift of four, so that's times by 16. Okay, so whatever the input is, so that means we're up sort of 16,000. Now, if I now reduce it, and you can see it's now starting to turn, it'll stabilise because it's turning quite, you know, a bit quicker. And, yeah. Excuse me. So I can turn it up, and obviously that increases the speed. You can see now we're showing a significant mark space ratio, about 25% I think. If I now decrease the mark, and obviously that's going to increase the speed because it increases the frequency because it's just simply decreasing the mark size, the mark period, which means the overall frequency is going to go up. If I take it to, you know, it's changing. Okay. So that's now made it so that the mark is now quite small, as you can see. Probably something like 5-10% maybe, if that. Okay. Now we can decrease the space. And you can see it alters the speed. Quite a lot. Yeah. So now we're back up to something like 10%. But because we've reduced the space, space torque's still there but we've increased the speed because it's increased the frequency. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I can decrease the mark a bit more because it's stable, because it's faster. And you can hear the sound change. And it doesn't, at this point, it won't increase the speed much because the speed mainly is governed by the space. Okay. It's a little bit unstable and I can turn that speed up a bit. And that welling effect is because the phasing is actually slightly out like that. It's trying to sink it. If I just increase the mark a little bit. There we go. See, it's locking easier now. And we can turn the space up. Hmm. It's quite sensitive, you see. Right. So there we go. We've got it spinning reasonably, as you can see. Just there. 
and that's the that's the actual BLD CPWM. So we've got maybe about 20% on the mark there, I would say. Okay. And I can increase the mark further now because it's stabilised a bit. And now it has more of an effect because there's a larger amount that's marked. Oops, lost luck. Too little.